I mean, house makes it like pipes that broken and all that kind of stuff. Water's like, off. Okay, good. I do know that. Um, I was worried about like, you know, you know, sprinkling all that stuff. I think it's, I usually blow them out and all that kind of stuff. Right, but right. I figured, yeah, I don't know anybody was actually going through it or watching it or anything. The water's, water's been off for a while, I do know that. The okay. power's still on there. So. Oh, it is? Yeah. So, um, fortunately, unfortunately, I don't know how you want to look at it, but um, we need to get a tiny bit more into the weeds and into the mechanics of um, the time you showed up at the house when Officer Coonrod was there okay. till the time when uh, we were all done talking. Okay. Um, so that includes at the house, that includes at the oil site um, and everything. Okay. okay. And part of the reason we need to get into that is, um, I mentioned before, how we're just really want to get into the mindset of what happened. Um, and you can imagine this is really important for us in the future when we're talking to a guy that's in your position to say, you know, this isn't really a monster. This is more like a Chris Watts. And boy, we remember with Chris, had we asked this or had we done this, we really could have been better. Um, and so that's why we want to get into the mechanics of it a little bit more with you. Um, and that's going to mean exactly how, exactly when, where were you, what was, you know, Shanann wearing, or, or all of that, right? Um, so we really just need for you to take a deep breath and get into it with us. And would it be all right if we ask you some specific questions? Okay. Um, so one of the first things we want to talk about was when you came home, so this is after they had passed, and you came home, um, one of the first things we see on the video is you walking into the garage and then into the uh, Shanann's car. Do you remember what that was about? In your car? Yeah, like I think you opened the door or something? Yeah, you opened the passenger door and it looks like you were looking for something or maybe you picked something up. Do you recall what that was? Not that I'm aware of. Not like, not looking for anything, but maybe just opening the car door to see if, like, you know, see if sir. Because uh, I think Nikki was saying, I think I see the car seat still in there. Yeah. Something like that. And I was, okay. uh, when I opened up the door, I looked in just to, uh, just like the first like reaction of like whatever, everybody's just waiting, pretty much waiting again in the house. Pretty much. Right, right. Okay. So I didn't, I wasn't like looking for anything as far as specific, specific or anything, but I was just, I don't know, just reaction going in there and, and I know everybody's there. I don't know what's going to happen when they get sure. in the house. You just had a nervousness, maybe? Yeah, I yeah. think a lot of it was a lot of nervousness. Sure. Okay. okay. And then backing up a tiny bit, I jumped forward <coughs> too, too far. Um, so, she comes home at 2 in the morning. Um, she gets into bed. Was, when you guys had sex together, was that pretty quickly after she came home? I think it was around like 2.30, because she, I felt like she'd be in bed for, for a little while. A little bit? Okay. Yeah. Um, and forgive me, it's it's not a pervy thing, but she woke you up. Yeah, she was just. I could I could feel like feel like a hand was okay. on me, like rubbing my leg or my chest or something. Okay. Like that. And then that was, you know, signal it's go time type thing. Pretty much, okay. she was like, yeah. Okay, okay I get it. Um, and then that was maybe a half an hour after. Mm -hmm. And then after that, is there any talking, or was it just kind of a just like, just quiet in the middle of the night? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just like I just, I just felt, I just felt her hand around me. I'm just like, what? Okay. And it was time like, to go. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's funny. All right. Um, then a couple hours of sleep. Alarm goes off. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess what I don't understand is, so then there was some talking, mm -hmm. and then how did you get on top of her? How did that happen? It's like when I got into bed, I just pretty because she was laying. When she when she was sleeping, she was laying like face down, which she really never does. Okay. And I was, I just got into bed and I kind of nudged her and then she like kind of rolled over and then I was just like, just like right there on top of her. Okay. And so that was after you'd gotten ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you go down, you make your food. Oh yeah, I got like cottage cheese and another couple of things that I made okay. for food that day. Okay. And then, so this is, we talked a little bit earlier today about, you know, there was all of these things playing in your mind where you just didn't even want to go another second without having this conversation or without some sort of completion, right? Mm -hmm. And then so you come back, she's asleep. And then you just kind of nudge her? Yeah, I just kind of like, you know, hey, look out for a second. And was there a nudge talk for 20 minutes, or was it just a nudge, and then all of a sudden you're on top of her? Nudge, no, pretty much on top. Okay, 
so that happened pretty quickly. Yeah, it was at Valley County pretty much talk. Okay. That was just right there. And was there talking? Yes. Okay. And so a nudge, a talk, she's laying down and you're standing up? I was on, I was like, I, I crawled back, I got on my side of the bed. Uh huh. And I just like nudged her like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you're talking while you're on top of her? Mm hmm. Okay. That seems confusing to me. Is that actually what happened? Okay. Um, and so. But she was fine, like just laying there, like you trying to talk to her while you're Should on I top think of her? Yeah, maybe I thought we were going to have sex again or something. Oh, something. okay. Um, okay. And how long did you talk? About 15, 20 minutes. Really? In that position? Okay. And was there any sex? No. Okay. Maybe she, I'm basically from the position that we were in, maybe she maybe thought maybe I'd try to go again. I don't know. Okay. And, and I don't harp on it too much, but I'm just trying to think if my wife's four months pregnant and it's five o'clock in the morning and I want to talk and I want to get on top of her, that's just not going to fly. So that's why I'm confused. So is that really what happened? Yeah. Okay. And then talk for about 15 minutes and then it's heated and then your hands are on her neck. Okay. All right. Um, what did the talk, what, what did the talk Basically, just about how well, at first it was more of like the you know selling the house type of thing, or not going to Aspen, or trying to maybe go in a, at a different time, and then just switched all to the I don't feel like I'm in love with you anymore, not compatible, and went to that, and that's when I got to the heated part of it. Okay. Did she ever say at some point get off of me or anything like that? At the end. Yeah. That's what she said. I don't want you to feel like you know because. Where I was, it was kind of like she didn't want me to like to, you know, sit down or like hurt the baby or anything yeah. like that. So it was just kind of like, so Did she like, accuse you of cheating at that point? Mm -hmm. So what'd she say? She's like, I knew there was somebody else. I knew there was somebody else. I, just, I, I didn't come out to say, you know, that there is somebody else, but she obviously already knew. Then your response to that was what? Did she say, no, there's not? <clears throat> you deny it? I believe I just denied it, but I mean, at that point. Is that always, because when she would accuse me at the beach, it was a lot of like, there's nobody else, you know, there's nobody else, you know, for like, you know, and when we got back home, she always like said, there's got to be somebody else, because she'd always talk to her friends, like Christina or somebody on text messaging, and they'd always say, there's got to be somebody else, if he's not wanting to sleep with you, like, getting it from somewhere else and there's you know there's nowhere else I mean she couldn't really say that we'll get anywhere else because I was using those hand or gift cards so it's kind of like you know she just mean me getting distant but she knew and I just that's, that's mainly the reason why I talked to her because I knew like after that night it was just like it felt like I just felt guilty more guilty than ever before yeah um, and then it seems to me, and sorry, I had a lot of thoughts here. So we know what happened, and we can talk about it today kind of openly. Um, and that's what we need from you is to just kind of say, you know, I know it sounds bad, or I know this, or I know I feel this way, but physically this is exactly what happened. Um, so if you could tell us that, it seems then that it would have had to have been a, a pretty quick transition from two people talking to this, yeah. right? Is that what happened? Yeah, it was like, I don't want to. I'm trying to think of the last last things we were talking about, but it was you know I don't feel like I love you, love you anymore, and then she was like you're never gonna see the kiss. Oh, no, that's perfect, Chris. That's exactly what we need. Okay, and I know it's hard to walk through that again, but that's exactly what we need. So then, as soon as she started talking like that, then it was on. Okay. But it was you saying that you didn't love her. Is that right? Okay. And her saying you're never gonna see the kiss. Yeah. Okay. I can imagine how that made you feel. Sorry. It didn't, didn't warrant what it did. Yeah. Um, and then the fact that she didn't scratch at you or anything, is that just because it was so powerful? I don't think it. I mean, I didn't feel like I've never done that before, put uh -huh. my hands around anybody before, so I don't even know what kind of force I was putting on her neck. Okay. It, like I said, two to four minutes, I don't know if that was two to four minutes. Did you cover her face at all during that time? Both hands on the neck. Okay. And so if it's done right, I mean, that can be a matter of seconds before someone on their carotid loses oxygen to their brain and it's out, right? 
did it seem like it was that quick or okay maybe a minute maybe two okay screaming okay uh, all right uh, did you see eyes go bloodshot or anything like that okay and you then, kept talking about the mascara. Did you see mascara on her face? Yes, it looked like it was like. I don't know, so I attributed it to. Is it was she crying? Is that why? At what point did she start crying? When I was talking about the relationship, about not being compatible. And when she was talking about that uh, there was somebody else, and that's where she started crying. That's where I thought, you know, it was mascara. Mm -hmm. I didn't know it wasn't. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Was there a pillow or something you wanted to ask about? Yeah, so there was, was there ever a, at any time a pillow or the sheet or anything involved in like that, on, on her face specifically? No? Okay. No, like the sheet that you kind of wrapped around to help get downstairs, that was about it. The one that was at the site? Okay. And then the other sheets, they were in the trash. At what point did you put those in there? I think that was... Obviously, after I was in the house. Yeah. I think it was probably the next day or so. Okay. I think, it, like, I don't know. I'm not sure, like, what happened. This is hard to talk about, like, when you yeah, yeah. strangle some out of, like, sometimes, I guess, they use the bathroom. Hmm. So, it was, like, I think that's one of the reasons why, because I think that had happened. Oh, okay. 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 You said she was sleeping face down at one point? Was her face in the pillow, or was it turned to the side, or how did that? Kind of like on the side. She was kind of like a side sleeper, but she was more more down than usual. Okay. But then she turned, rolled completely onto her back mm -hmm. when you start talking to her? Okay. <clears throat> um, now, as hard as that was, I think you need to talk about the girls, too, okay? All right. Thank you. Um, so with the girls, we talked about how they... Uh, got into the truck with you and were alive. Okay. Are you 100% sure that's true? Okay. Um, can, we, can we ask, go back just a second? Mm -hmm. um, you talked about before that Bella walked in, though, to the bedroom. Can you tell us about that before you left? Yeah, it was, I was just getting, like, getting the sheet off the bed, and she had walked in, and she had her little pink blanket with her. She was like, what's, what's wrong? What's wrong with and where was Shanann at that point? Yeah, just pretty much on the bed, but she was face down. Wrapped in the sheet? What did you say? I just said, you know, she doesn't feel good. That's when I tried to carry her downstairs. Shanann? Okay. Did you carry her like this? Did you drag her? How did you do it? Tempted to, tempted to pick her up and, and pick her up and take her down, but I lost the grip. Did Bella see you do that? What was Bella saying? She started uh, crying a little bit. She's like, what's wrong with mom? And what did you say that time? I said, she's, she's a little good. She, she's a smart girl. She, she knows what's on there. Mm -hmm. Did she ever touch your hand? Try and wake her up or anything? No. Didn't want to see her or ask to see her or anything. And so that initial time, did she see you put uh, Shanann in the truck? So she was kind of following you? Okay. So she followed you and you put Shanann in the truck. Okay. And then what? I got. Cece wasn't up yet. I she was. I think she was just in her room. She was getting ready to get out of her bed. And then they were just walking around the house. I was. But the. My lunchbox and stuff in the truck, and then grab the kids and I put them in the bench sheet in the back. Right. So, Shanann, is she kind of on the floor in the back? And they're just on the bench? Okay. Um, and both alive at that point. Okay. Is there any reason you would feel uncomfortable to tell me that they were not alive at that point? No. Okay. Could, wasn't it a video or anything? Um, it's hard to see. 
and I, and I believe you. I'm just, um, I'm trying to make sure that I'm giving you all the opportunities to be comfortable enough uh -huh. to tell me exactly. Okay. They, they were really like, okay. okay. Trust so. me, I hear that every, every day when a fellow is talking to me, I just like. Oh, really? What do you mean? When she said, Daddy, no. When we were driving to the site, she said, Daddy, it smells. Oh. Okay. So that, that goes back to maybe Shanann evacuating herself? I don't know if it was that. I, you know that smell like a, like a skunk maybe sometimes? Oh, that's okay. I got some, some kind of smell that way, but I don't know what that was from. And was that maybe outside the trap or was that in? I don't know. Okay. What did you guys talk about on the way out? They were pretty quiet. They just, you know, laid next to each other. Okay. Maybe Bella in her lap and Cece in her lap, just back and forth. Oh, okay. Just trading off like little ones do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Were they awake? I think well, one would kind of fall asleep, the other one. And Cece would maybe kind of trade off back and forth. Were they talking to you? Just about, you know, just saying, Daddy, it smells. Oh, okay. It feels early in the morning, they were showing up there. Yeah. Okay. Did you have to, so did, you didn't have to wake Cece up? No, there was the noise from trying to get Shana down the stairs. Did she kind of fall down the stairs? No, it was more of like trying to get her down and like, you know, from the steps, maybe her foot at the next step kind of thing. Oh. Know, they, they were like, So then, once you get to the site, tell me what happens. So I get to the, that one site, and I get Shannon out to that, pull over to the part right off the side, the site there. Okay. And the girls are still in the truck. Okay. Did they ask you what you were doing, taking mommy out, or? Yeah, I don't remember what I told them, but they did ask. They, what they say specifically? It was more of like, you know, what are you doing to mommy? Okay. And then is that when you buried her? I didn't, I didn't, I don't, I don't remember if, it, if I dug a, a hole there first or, but I don't, they didn't watch me do that. Okay. So then pulled Shanann out and she's maybe just sitting there on top of the ground? Yeah, like off to the side. Off to the side, close to where she ended up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. And then the girls, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You mentioned Bella was first. Cece was first. Okay. Um, where exactly was she when it happened? In the back seat. Okay. Was she just right next to Bella? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, um, so once again, was it a hand over her face? Was it? It was a blanket over. My hand. And then your hand. Okay. And then so that just stopped her from breathing type thing? Okay. Did she struggle at all? I don't think so, but my, it, I was blocking her face and my hand was right here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You had one hand here and one hand over her mouth? And we're just pushing her against the back of the seat type thing? Okay. What was Bella doing? She was sitting there next to it. She didn't know what was going on. Okay. Could she see you? And then, did that take a minute or two? I didn't have no light contact at the time at this okay. point. Okay. Tell me about what you were thinking. I was, I was thinking and sort of happened. Yeah. Right, any partial hint of what I feel for those girls and what I feel for my wife, but nothing, none of this would have happened. So I don't, I wasn't thinking. So she's in the back seat. Okay. Um, and then once she's gone, then is it Bella next, or is did you pull Cece out? I pulled Cece out. Okay. So once Cece's gone, Bella's still there in the car alive, and then you pulled Cece out. What did you do with her? Okay. So she went into the tank, and Bella was still in the back of the truck alive. Okay. Um, with regard to that tank, did you bring up Cece, put her down, open the hatch? Brought her up, open the hatch. And put her in. Okay. When we talked the very first time we met, when we were talking about this, it was a 
that are just lowering, lowering her down. Okay, and so she went in feet first. Okay. Was she able to fit pretty well? Was it snug? Did you have to like move her around a little bit and get her in there? I think so. Okay. All right. No, I didn't have to like you know hit her like you know okay. my back. It's not like you stomped her in. No. Okay. No. Um, and then close the hatch. Yes. Okay. And then went down to Bella. Tell me what happened there. She said, "What happened to CC?" Or she asked. Did the same thing, the exact same thing that happened to me as DC. Did she ask you that? Okay. So Bella's pretty smart. How did she sound when she asked you that, Rick? She had that, that, just that soft voice she always had. Yeah. And what exactly did she say? She said that did the same thing that happened to me as DC. And then I said, I don't even remember what I said. I don't know if I just said yes like a horrible person or if I just put, the sh put that blanket over her too and did the same thing. Same blanket, same way? Mm-hmm. Okay. She said no, Daddy. And that's the last thing she said. Did she say no, Daddy, like please no, Daddy type thing? Did she say thing, don't do it? And she said she, she said no, Daddy. Okay. Same way, hand on neck, hand over mouth, or hand over blanket with your over mouth. Did that take a couple minutes? I feel like it. Okay. Then, then what? I just noticed she had a couple spots, like over her eye or something, and I picked her up. And same thing. Okay. Um, and we talked a little bit earlier today about it. You don't remember why a different tank? Okay. And there was no reason? They're both the same tanks. I mean, there's just like, I don't, I don't know why I did two different things. Okay. There's one, I, I never got up there. Does one catwalk lead to both? Oil can go on either tank. Okay. But if you go up one set of ladders, does that eventually yes, communicate yeah. to it's both? It's one catwalk. Okay. Now, Bella was a little bit bigger. Was she harder to get in? It, it felt like a little bit. Okay. And so was it a matter of just kind of maneuvering her? All right. Um, so then, they're both in there. Um, is there any reason to think they were alive when they fell in? Okay, you're pretty sure. Okay. So once that's done, then what? Go over to Shenan. Clear away some leaves and I dig a hole. Okay. Did you have a shovel? Yeah, we have a shovel, rake, and a weed, weed racker. Part of our tools. With that rake, if I remember right, it was, was part of it was sitting there because it was broken. Oh, did it break as you were digging or something? No, when I was raked, when I was like smoothing the ground over. It, on this day, it broke when you were doing that. Okay. Was that after you were all done? And it seemed as though maybe the first people that got there saw it was, was it stuck in the ground. I guess it was like not like standing up, but it was like laying down. Oh, okay. Were you planning on coming back? I mean, I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. At this point then, this is just before then, in a couple of hours, you would make it back home mm -hmm. to see Officer Conrad. Okay. And so once she's buried, then what? That's when people start showing up, I believe. Did you notice where she cut or broken or bleeding in any way? No. I mean, I know, like, the bloodshot eyes you were talking about, I noticed that at that point. Okay. Other than that, no. Um, had she partially given birth? No. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember. Remember, she, she had a shirt and think blue underwear on. Okay. That's it. And so at that point, she was, okay. Thank you. I know that wasn't easy. Can you, can you tell us about, <clears throat> obviously you know when the district attorney got up and talked about Bella's injuries and stuff? Yeah, I, I didn't want to hear about that. Right. Can you tell us about that? As far as like her biting her tongue? And 
ripping her frenulum, which is that connective skin from your lip to your gum. It was gone. Her gums had like a, it looked like a hole in them. Um, and the pathologist said it was from her obviously struggling to get away. I didn't know what that, I didn't know what that meant. Yeah. Could it be that that's what happened? So like, I didn't put my hand like over, that, over her, like, like that. Is that what you're talking about? Well, it would have been just downward pressure on her, this area. I didn't, I didn't see any of that when I picked her back up. Like it was, it was like her lip was like missing or something? Or? No, wow. see this skin that uh -huh. connects there? Yeah. That was ripped, like it was gone. So it kind of made I'm, like I a mean, hole maybe, in her gum. I'm, I'm just thinking maybe it's like, Maybe like if her mouth hand was not her head was like twisting back and forth, would that have done that? Yeah. I had a blanket open. I don't know. Like, Did you feel her doing that thrashing? Now you're trying to get away. I or? felt her head moving back and forth. You did. But I don't. I didn't, I didn't know that it happened. Could you tell if she was trying to yell or say anything? Or the only thing that was the daddy no, and then like the some grunt here and there, trying to like, trying to breathe. Mm -hmm. During that time, do you remember getting phone calls from Nicole Atkinson? Mm -hmm. After, uh, I think, before she got to my house or after? Just any time during that morning. I think I didn't get one until I saw her on my doorbell camera. And that was, what, 10 o'clock? Yeah, I was right around there. Okay. And so at that time, had everything been done out of 3319? Yeah, it was at a different site, was at a pumping unit. Okay. So you went from there when it was all done, so the girls are in the oil, uh, shenanigans in the ground, and maybe a little bit of cleanup. Um, was there any questions we had about the sheets or any garbage can or, or garbage sack? No, I think okay. you answered those already. All right. So then you went from that site to another site to work? Yeah, because we had, there was a, at that survey 319, there was a little spill. That, that's, a, that's where we most everybody showed up there because that spill, that was we were trying to figure out what happened. Oh. While well, you're on that subject, let me back up. The, the night before, you had some text messaging about going out there. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that was, I think, Friday that we had figured out there was a spill out there from, like, it's an old site. It's set up a little different. So what had happened was there was a downcomer, and then there's a sidecomer going into those oil tanks, and one of the downcomers is tied into a back pressure line that split, and every time it was dumping oil, it was split underground, and it was the oil was coming up okay. out of the ground. And we decided just to go out there on Monday because it was Friday, and he had like switched it out, or he, either he shut it in or he switched switch lines or he covered it up and see if it was going to come back or not. Okay, and then it's more specifically you talked or. Your text about how you would go out there and take yeah, care of it. Yeah, I've gone take care of it for him because okay. I've gone out there plenty of times. Okay. So I, I used when another guy was out there as far as another foreman. He showed me around out there like a year or so ago, and I just got familiar with the place and I just oiled them out. Okay. And so that was a genuine. Yeah, that, was, that was wasn't just, a pre alibi. No, that was. Because was, there was a lot of people that uh -huh. said that you wouldn't normally do that. I'm, you normally help somebody? No, like a, a field to your position. I, not you specifically, but your position doesn't do that kind of stuff. Well, that's the thing. Like when I was a rover and to a field coordinator, I still try to do everything I used to do. Okay. So that's still like I wasn't good at delegating stuff. I just used to just doing stuff on my own, or just okay. like taking care of it for somebody else. Right. I, I wasn't good at the whole like, hey, you could do this, you could do that, yeah. while I sit over here. And, and well, you see what it looks like to us. I know. You I know. know. It's, it's like when it, it came up, we're I like know. making plans to be out there. You know that day. I know. But that's not what it was. That was natural. Was, no. Okay. I was just, no, I was going to help him. So how long were you there? What time do you think you were done with the girls? It's hard to really tell. I mean, I think everybody started showing up there by around 7.45, 8 o'clock. Okay. So. And then you were there. Did you see went to a different site? Yeah, it's like the... I think it was either the 1029 or the 629 or something like that. And so 
how long were you at that site? The rest of the day until I got called away. So then that was, you were there for at least a couple hours until you heard Nicole Atkinson on the doorbell. Yeah. And then I think there was even more time after that until you started coming home. Yep. And you got home at 2, two something? No, it was closer to 1.30. Okay. Uh, yeah. So somewhere around, you know, 9 o'clock-ish all the way till 12.30 or 12 or mm -hmm. 1 or something. And then, and then came home. Yep. Okay. Um, there was a lot to do about coming home and listening to that Metallica song. Have you heard about that? I've heard, about, I've, heard, I've heard of a Metallica song that people have been, some of the same lyrics to it, it's called Battery. Do you remember doing that? That was uh, Nikki Kessinger. She liked the song, or she just wanted to know what it meant. Oh. So I just, that's, why that's why you I, looked it up? Mm -hmm. I just kind of looked at the, I didn't have the CD with me, so I didn't, okay. you know, I and just kind of looked at the words. And was that on the way home? Mm -hmm. Oh, that was just a different time? That was a different time. Okay, and, and so the media it's probably got a wind of that. because it's a battery. Right, okay. But it's like, you know, it's, it's more about like a, like a family coinciding as a battery. Okay. You know, not like, you know, hitting somebody. Sure. Yeah. Why did Nikki want to know what it meant? Like, how did that come I don't know. It was, it was kind of strange. I mean, she, she's very into different types of music. And, <laughs> I mean, music I never really thought I'd ever listen to. And like she got me into a few things there as far as music was, but like battery was just something that she asked me because I knew I knew Metallica pretty well. She just wanted to know like, hey, what's this? What's this still there for me? And I just yeah, I just looked it up just to look at all the words together and just put it in put it in my head again and all the just made something out of nothing. That's why it was strange. I got those lyrics in the in the, in the letter. Oh, so now does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, some specific lyrics to it. Yeah. I think that guy from California. The oh, one that was the kid? Yeah. Point. The yeah. senior? Okay. Um, with regards to then when you get home, the, you and the officers, you know, saw what they saw. You mentioned that you took the ring off her finger. Um, and then the book, you, did you throw that in the trash? Okay. Um, there was another book, Body of Evidence. Does that sound familiar? That you had in your cell. A body of that, um, Patricia Cornwell? Maybe. That sound right? Probably. Mm -hmm. Did it in Lowell County? Mm hmm What was that about? That was just one they gave me. Who gave it to you? The, uh, deputies. Not or, your attorneys, or, or? Oh, no, they can't give me books. Oh. No, any book that I had was given to me by their book cart. So you didn't ask for that book? Or? No, they just kind of give me, like, hey, I read some Brad Thor books. Um, he's like a military guy. And Patricia Cornwell, my grandma, always read her books and thought it was, I mean, she was always, she loved those books. And I'm not sure if that was probably the, one of the first books, not the first book I read there, but probably the second book I read there. But it was like they had to give me, here's four books, choose. What other book did you read? Do you remember? The first book they gave me when I was in Suicide Watch was, I, I don't know why, but it was Murder at Something. And I was like, I looked at him and was like, that's, that's the one we got. I'm like, okay. But, huh. They handed you that, that mm -hmm. book by itself, no other choices? No, the next book I got, another guy that was, I guess they're overcrowded there, a guy was sleeping on a cot under, outside my door. He's like, here, try this one. That was one that was based like in the 1800s. It's more of like a situational book, like a time period book, so that was a little more yeah. calm for that one. That was the first book they gave You don't remember what it was called, Murder at something? Murder at the Truman Center. Truman Center? Yeah, I think it was, um, Murder at the Kennedy Center. Kennedy Center. Um, I think it was written by Margaret Truman. Did you read it? Mm -hmm. Was it good? I didn't, I'd never read, read a book in a long time, so it was, it was different, but like like some of the books they gave you, like when you're in the hold, I know you're not allowed to have books in there besides the Bible, but the the, uh, the counselors there let me have a couple of books, and they just like, I, you know, here's the ones you choose from, that's the ones they had. I told them like mystery books or something like that, and that's the ones. Mm -hmm. It's kind of crazy they're giving them like murder books. Mystery you hope that it wasn't some sort of yeah. insult or, you know, you can only hope. Um, okay. <clears throat> what do you
are you thinking yourself about? Back, back when all this happened, when I was in Will County and everything, I just I didn't, I definitely didn't feel like myself anymore. Like it, when my attorneys would talk to me and like, you know, talk to some of my friends and like some of the stuff they would say, like, like they would say good things, but I'm just thinking to myself, how could even anybody even say those things about me now, being what happened? It's like people that I knew and that I never talked to again. That I, like maybe I was like the roommate like back in the day or like went to school with or something like that. They just, now they're just going to say, that's, you know, it's like Chris Watts, that's, you know, a guy with the high school after guy, like, you know, get all this horrible stuff to his family. And now it's like, I know I shouldn't really, you know, take to heart what other people think about me so much. It's just a matter of, like, what God thinks about me, what I, what, like, what he thinks, what his opinion is, not, not anybody else's. I mean, everybody's going to have their opinion about everybody, like, before I got in trouble, I mean, I was always the guy, hey, look, they're judge somebody on TV. You know, like, like that guy that's no orange junction. That guy that's, you know, that killed that guy. That guy that raped that killed somebody. You know, like, oh, you know, that guy's horrible. Now I'm the, and it's like, now like when we come out at like six, six o'clock at night and there's something on the news, like, I try not to even pay attention to it. It's like, I don't want to be in that position where I'm judging somebody else. Cause that's, you know, what people were doing to me. I don't want to be that person anymore. But I just hope that I can, you know, step back and kind of look at everything that I've done in my life. And then, like, up to that point, I just, like, I did some good things. But a matter of the most important thing, I screwed up the worst. I just hope I can at least maybe help somebody. And uh, however much time I have left. Was was it your intent the whole time you were taking the girls out there that they were that you were gonna do that to them? Honestly, it's like when I got this, when I got there, I didn't I didn't think it was gonna like you talking about the tanks or just yeah like well just I mean I, I just I, the thought process and all this none of this makes sense. That's why I know you guys keep asking these questions because it doesn't make sense to me. But I, I guess I mean like did you? You could have done it before you guys left, I know. and not had him, you know, alive in the back seat. They could have been with Shanann in the back seat. Or I stuff. didn't think about anything really, like as far as like how everything was going to happen. I don't know, like why I happened, like why I left everything out there in the field, and why like all this stuff. Like just, none of this makes sense at all. But to Tammy's point. They, they might be coming back, or did you know they wouldn't be coming back? No, it's. I mean, the whole trip out there, I mean, it was like I was on. Like, I wasn't thinking. It was like. Like, I, in my mind right now, I'm thinking back. I'm like, I'm hoping that I wasn't. Like. That I wasn't coherent enough to make that decision to where I knew I was going to kill my girls. I was, I'm just hoping that, you know, like, like no, no father would want, ever want to do anything to hurt his, his blood and flesh, but I did that, and I just don't understand how it happened. But, I mean, I even read books that say, you know, like, no, no dad would ever do anything to hurt his children. It just happened. So I always think of myself, like, did I, was I even a dad at one point? I don't know. But it just... It's gonna take a long, long time to guilt and everything to get this through. Have you asked for forgiveness from God? Mm -hmm. yeah. It just takes a long time for me to forgive myself. And that's one thing that's gonna take a long So that they can one day forget me too. Stay with and me. I think I think you said earlier that you were so angry at Shanann or whatever that you were gonna, you know, anyone in your path of destruction or whatever was gonna get it. Basically, kind of is what kind of made it.
doesn't sound like I'm not saying that exactly right, but why were you so angry at Shanann? I don't know if it was just because of separating me and my family, pretty much. Because, I mean, it happened at the wedding. Like, that's the reason they didn't come to the wedding. I mean, I blew up at my family like, to a point where I, I said some horrible things to them back, you know, back in 2012 that I'll, you know, and I pretty much told my family that, you know, I don't need this anymore. Because I have, <laughs> I, I said, you know, I cussed my mom out. I did all this kind of stuff. I never thought, you know, and I don't know if it was just like, Shan coached me on to do it, or if it was just like rage that was like I'd never seen before. And then I don't know if it was just everything that happened in July, but I can't see my kids, and I'm not sure if they would, if they're ever going to go see them again. I don't know. And it was just like, I don't know if that had something to do with it, that something inside of me just triggered it, and then just like all that pent up from the wedding and everything, just like, it's like a, a long fuse that finally just went to its end. What happened in 2012? There was a, like, my mom and this man just like, like from when I proposed to her, it was at the beach and from then on it was just like, like she always went up to Shanann and was like, I, I didn't need a ring like that when I was your age, I don't, I didn't need all these fancy things when I was your age and just kind of kept boiling over and boiling over and we just kept, they never agreed on anything, it was just like, you know, it, I mean, we didn't really need their help to do anything. We just like said, we'll just pay for it ourselves and all that kind of stuff. And you know, it was just back and forth. And I think she, maybe my mom just never thought she was good enough. She always thought she was hiding something from me. So, she always thought Shanann was hiding something. Like what? Kind uh, of stuff from her past, or like you know. Oh, know. I see. Yeah. Is there conflict at a barbecue? all the families got together and the first maybe a barbecue that Shannon put together for everybody to get to meet each other two families if you call that like when you first started dating oh I remember we did have something like that but I didn't oh, remember like a any kind of arguments at any place like that I know like when I proposed to her Shanann had her family come down to the beach too. They set, set, stayed at a separate separate house. But as far as like a barbecue or anything, I don't remember one that was like that. Way right before then? Yeah. yeah. I, I, remember the, I remember the time when I asked Frank to, if it was okay if I had asked Shanann to marry her. I remember that little get together. I don't think. So I then what was the book at the wedding about? It was just my mom. And pretty much my sister just, just didn't like her. Oh. They just, it was, they just thought, you know, that I, that they, that she.